Don't that music just make you think something bad's gonna happen? April the 18th, 2015, Verona, New York. What is it? The, uh, I don't even know the name of the venue. Turning Stone Resort or something. Anyway, you would think, why such a weird venue? Verona, New York of all places. Why not in Barclays? Why not in MSG? You know, why not over in the Stub Pub? Well, that's because, thank you, Al Heyman. Thank you so much. Um, gotta hang you back. I gotta give him a new, I gotta give him a new, uh, picture frame. Um, and it's crazy. This is the second picture frame that's broke. It's must, it's just not... This is just not meant to be. But basically, Al Heyman and uh, PBC on NBC, PBC on CBS, PBC on Spike, maybe coming soon, PBC on ESPN, um, and Showtime Championship Boxing has all the venues pretty much taken up. So there's going to be a uh, split venue for a big night of boxing on April the 18th. Of my God, you got listen. That's a crazy day for boxing. You got to thank Al Heyman, but we're just going to focus on the HBO part. All right, I'll do HBO a favor. We're just going to only talk about the HBO fights. So we're going to talk about, well, we're not going to talk about Terrence Crawford versus um, Tumaj Delore, man. We're going to talk about that in another video. This video, we're going to be talking about Bruce Lampert Votnikov 24 and... 24 and 3 with 17 KOs versus uh, Lucas Martin Matisse Matisse Matisse, who was 36 and 3 with 34 KOs. The winner of this will face the winner of Tumaz Delorme and Terrence Crawford or Chris Algieri, however you mix that in. So you got basically this little bit of an unofficial tournament going on with um, Terrence Crawford, Delorme, um, Chris Algieri, Ruslan Provodnikov. And Lucas Matisse. Now it's this weird thing where Lucas Matisse was the number one contender for the WBO, but then Terence Crawford, since he was the champion in the 135 pound division, he leapfrogs and becomes the number one contender. And then Ruslan Provodnikov, who was the former champion, ha you know it's 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 a weird situation. It's a weird situation, but you have a fight. That you have to think to yourself, you have to give Lucas Martin Matisse 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 a lot of credit. Why is you have to give him the credits? Because he's doing something that the fans want. Not all like fans, not all fans want certain fighters to sign with Al Heyman. Because if you sign with Al Heyman, you know it's this big grand business thing and all that. But in a way, the fans lose out to a certain extent. To a certain extent, I'm not saying that the fights aren't good. I'm not saying that we not, listen. Listen, honestly, for a guy like me who works on YouTube, and let's let's just be logical. Thank you, Al Heyman. He's given me a lot of uh, of, of content to cover. Thank you, Al Heyman. Uh, thank you so much. So, and I will his I will get a new picture, and I will get a new matter of fact. The next picture frame, I'm going to get a golden picture frame. It's not going to be real gold, but we just want to make sure we put Al Heyman on a grand platform. God, and he's the he's the boxing Obama. But anyway. You got Lucas Matisse, right, in my opinion, who's the better overall fighter. You got Ruslan Provodnikov, who's the, he's, he, he's very dangerous, he scares me, he screams randomly, and he will push frozen cars to his fights. I don't, listen, true story. And his favorite foods, his favorite foods are milk and meat. And what he does before the fight is, he goes to church, and he lights some candles for you. He puts on, he puts on an all-black suit. He goes to church and he lights a whole bunch of candles for your ass. And then he prays for you. But it's not that he, that he lights the candles and prays for you. It's just that, you know, it was, it was that HBO face-off with him and Mike Alvarado where he just was like lean back in his chair. And he just was like, you know, I'm going to go to church on, on this Sunday. I'm going to pray that you don't get hurt in training camp. I'm going to light some fucking candles for your ass. And then I'm going to see you in the ring on Saturday. And what, and, and, and what you see from him is, what you see from Ruslan, despite the fact that he has three defeats against Mauricio Herrera, and really, now listen to me, against Mauricio Herrera, Timothy Bradley, and Chris Algieri, what happened in those fights? Very close fights that could have went either way, and also fights where he beat the living shit out of the three guys that beat him, literally. Like Mauricio Herrera, got, no, put it this way, Mauricio Herrera's face got fucked up. There's no better way to put it. His face got... If you look at that, he's, he was fucked up. And that's how you know, like, Herrera's legit. His face was fucked up. But if you look at Timothy Bradley, he had Timothy Bradley. Timothy Bradley was all concussed. You know, like, getting carried back to the locker room and all that little crap. He ended, he ended the fight on his knees. Remember the one time when Matisse hit him with a... I believe, I don't remember the exact combination. I forgot what round it was. But he hit Timothy Bradley with, like, a left hook. And Timothy Bradley went to the ropes. About stomped and hit with a right hook. Timothy Bradley goes to, like... Goes like to the other, just knocking him all around the ring. So he is a scary dude. And then you know, you know, you know, Chris Algeria likes to do backflips and all that. 
Provoke Nikov punched him dead in the eye. He goes down. All of a sudden, I just start swelling up, just puffing up, like, oh, I was going to use some profanity. I'm not. You know, I'm trying to, I'm toning down the profanity. I'm toning down the profanity on my live shows. Even though I can curse as much as I want, still, you know, I'm toning down the profanity just a little bit. So what I'll do is, I'll use, I'll use, um, like, I'll use, like, one, like, fuck, <laughs> like, like, probably, like, twice a show. See, because that was number two. So we'll leave it at that. Um, he will beat you down. Now, with now, if if you look at if you look at Lucas Matisse, when you look at his defeats, they were close fights as well. Zab Judah, Devin Alexander, but then you look at Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia just beat him down. And, this, and, and and I understand whatever you think about Danny Garcia now. Danny Garcia beat Lucas Matisse down. People forget how much Danny was going through when people were saying, "Oh shit, he gonna get slaughtered." And then when they then when Danny Garcia was at the Lamont Peterson fight and they zoomed in on Danny Garcia's face, he just had that straight face. So, but, but what I see is, I see that Lucas Matisse can box. To whereas in Provodnikov, he has some issues cutting off the rim. Now, I understand we're expecting to see some type of blood letting war. I understand that we're expecting to see, we're expecting to see a blood sacrifice. Yes, we will see that. But at the same time, we're going to see Matisse moving a lot because I can't see ever a Ruslan Provodnikov fighting on the back foot. Do I think that? Do I think that this is going to be um, a fight that goes the distance? Yes, I do. Because if you look at Ruslan Provodnikov, let's be perfectly honest with you. Do you see a guy like Ruslan Provodnikov getting knocked out? Honestly, 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 do you see him getting knocked out? You know, wrestling bears and all that. No, I don't. I don't see it. Lucas Matisse say yes he can, especially what was going on with the um, knockdowns in the um, John Molina fight. And John Molina is a smaller fighter, and also you know what happened with Danny Garcia. So yes, I can I can see Lucas Matisse maybe getting stopped, but at the same time, Ruslan Provodnikov has to learn or you know know how to cut off the ring. Now let's now let's understand this right. At that point in time, it'll be what about ten months um, since uh, Ruslan Provodnikov had been in the ring. Um, because I believe the uh, Chris Algieri fight was in June, if I'm correct. Yeah, I believe it was June of 2014. Um, his biggest issue is he has not learned how to cut off the ring effectively to the point where he'll be right there, right, you know, right there in front of you, following you around, you know, and he'll be right there in in in, in range to hit you, and he just does not, you know. I, I see maybe Lucas Matisse beating him off a of punch output. I just see him beating him off a of punch output. That's just my own personal opinion. But I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. I'm a video reporter with RealCombatMedia.com. I cover every single major fight live. This year, it looks like, okay, here's the fights I'm going to be going to. I'm going to be um, covering live at the event. Um, Danny Garcia versus Lamont Peterson. Um, um, also, you're going to have Andy Lee versus Peter Quillen on that card. Um, Vladimir Klitschko versus Bryant Jennings at the Madison Square Garden, and of course Mayweather versus Pacquiao. God willing, but it's no way. I mean, I, I should, I should have no issues. T Street Controversy on Twitter, T Street Controversy on Facebook, T Street Controversy on Vine, T Street Controversy on Tumblr, T Street Controversy on Pinterest, T Street Controversy on Google Plus. Please subscribe. I cover every single major fight live. Also, at the bottom of the description box, my page is filling up. If, if you're a boxing fan or if you're, you know, a promoter or whatever, come to my page. Even if, like, listen, look at my friends list. It says enough. It's the link at the bottom of the description box. I'm doing massive networking. There's reasons why. Just trust me. Send a friend request. You won't just get in. I got to screen you, all kind of stuff like that. But send a friend request. T-Street Controversy, T-Street Controversy Live.